Hello, and uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my name is Boy Pelo Sopela, and I'm a sales representative here at NetCB. And on behalf of NetCB staff and the entire team, I'd like to welcome everyone today and wishing you the warmest welcomes. Um, thank you for joining us on this lovely Thursday afternoon for one of our webinars that we have on a weekly basis. Um, do be sure to check out our website for future webinars and register for them. I promise you it's nothing to miss. Um, today, the primary point of discussion will be centered around the hybrid RMS, which is a product that we're very proud of here at NetCB. It is in-house developed and it is one of our many babies. So do feel free to ask any questions within the chat, within the chat field. Um, um, we'll be answering them alongside the presentation. Um, Quibus Burgers, which is our managing director, will be handling the better half of the presentation today. And any other sales related questions, please relay them to the chat field, as I said, and myself, Boy Pelo Siopela and Justin Foxcroft will definitely be there to answer them for you guys. So please, uh, without any further ado, Quibus, please take it away. <laughs> Thank you very much, Boy Pelo, um, for that introduction. Now, thank you very much for everyone that's attending the webinar this afternoon. Um, some of you who don't know me, I'm Kobus Burgos, the Managing Director of NetCB. And I'm going to take you today through a system that we have developed uh, here in South Africa. And it's already in use by a couple of our clients. Uh, it's good to see some of those clients already also attending this webinar this afternoon. But let's uh, start. Oh, oh, by the way, um, I said, uh, Boy Pillow said uh, that you can mention questions in the chat. There's actually a QA section where you can also log questions that you would like to ask during the course of the presentation. Now, let's uh, just a brief overview for those of you who don't know NetCB. We are now in our 19th year of business. We regard ourselves as technology innovators. Um, we have developed various um, technologies over the years um, from document migration tools. Um, uh, one of our projects that's currently um, in progress is the uh, GroupWise video con conferencing add-on and that will uh, be released quite shortly. Uh, we as a company, we have worked in many different countries across the world over the years. Uh, although our uh, focus is quite significant on the African continent where we've done projects in various uh, uh, countries across the continent. Our areas of expertise are specific in the foreign areas, um, digital workspaces, which deals with the, the way people collaborate, how you manage that digital workspace environment. Um, this has become far more re relevant now during the years of the pandemic. And it's also becoming the new normal. Um, we have one of our uh, upcoming webinars deal specifically with um, this uh, digital transformation and how people can um, create this hybrid environment between on-premise systems and cloud-based systems. An area that is very close to us is around the cybersecurity um, environment. Cybersecurity has become probably one of the most critical aspects within any organization, especially since the start of the pandemic. And uh, for those of you that are interested in the cybersecurity field, next week, um, Thursday, we have a specific um, webinar that's dealing with the way you develop software applications that your cybersecurity and security mechanisms are built in right from the day one when you start to code your applications. Another area where we are working very extensively is within the hybrid cloud environment where organizations want to start to make use of cloud-based services, such as within the Azure Active Directory, Windows 365 environment, as well as um, um, AWS um, cloud services. Um, and we already have built our own in-house expertise around those practices. Now let's jump into what the records management is all about. Our hybrid RMA system it deals specifically with records management. But I think it's very important up front that people first need to have a very good understanding of, about records management and why do we need records management. But first of all, there is a specific ISO standard um, 
uh, ISO 16175, which defines the minimal functional requirements for a hybrid records management system. Remember the word hybrid. There are a, quite a large number of records management solutions out in the market, but quite often we find that they only deal with electronic records. Our solution and the solution that you will see today is designed to cater for both your physical records as well as your electronic records. Now the core functional areas within the standard and within records management is to take you through the capturing process, the identification of your records, also the establishment of a classification scheme. That classification scheme is quite often known as a file plan within most organizations, especially in government. Um, it's also the maintenance of that classification scheme. It's not something that uh, remains static. It's also important that we deal with hybrid records, as I mentioned before, because not all records are always only electronic. We quite often have physical records that we, we need to maintain, and there may be certain legislation that requires of you to maintain the original of certain types of records. Another aspect is the retention and disposal of these records. It is quite critical in an organization that once uh, a record needs to be disposed of after a certain period, that it actually is disposed of because it may actually uh, put the organization into jeopardy because that record may be used in the wrong context many years down the line. Um, another important uh, process is the, the dissemination of records. It means how do you share, how you give access for people on how to access this. And the final part is the administration part on how you manage the administration of the records within such a system. The next slide I know is very complex and it may not be that visible, but we will share um, this presentation online afterwards so that you can zoom in if it's too small, but we have summarized the entire ISO 16175 on a single slide. It's a very comprehensive standard and it deals with all the different aspects and the sub aspects of each and every one of the main categories that I've just mentioned. From the capturing process, the identification of the records, etc. There are various related standards. Um, obviously, uh, we primarily looked at the ISO 16175 um, because it is designed specifically for public and the private sectors in terms of records management. There's also the ISO 23081 and 23082 uh, released consecutively uh, in 2006 and 2007 that defines how you need to maintain and manage your metadata for the records. There is a global standard that is referred to as the ISO 15489, but the ISO 16175 is directly aligned to this standard, more on a functional level. Now, people always ask me, why must we have records management? The law states that. And in South Africa, apart from various industry related standard practices and regulations, there are about 30 different pieces of legislation that refers to records management. I know the type typing is quite small on the screen, but I had to fit in 30 references on this. And if you are interested in the slideshow afterwards, you are welcome to request it from us. But there are 30 pieces of legislation that directly refers to the practices of records management in South Africa. It means that if you do not follow these regulations and requirements, you are actually breaking the law. That is how serious it is and how important it is 
to have the practices of records management within your organization. I know in government, especially, most of the records management processes are mainly uh, based on uh, paper-based processes, but nowadays, many organizations need to implement electronic records management systems. And that is also why we developed our solution that can cater for both environments from a physical environment as well as your electronic environment. It is also important to note that this is not only for government or governmental organizations or municipalities. It applies to the private sector as well, companies, corporates, but also private individuals. Um, many of us may recall years ago, there should be a shake trial. One of the charges in that trial was the failure of the companies failing to keep proper records within those organizations. That was one of the charge sheets that ended, helped ended him ending up in jail at the end of the day. Now, what constitutes a record? They are a whole records life cycle. Quite often it starts as a normal document uh, electronic document that goes through a process of creation. In that process of creation, there's collaboration around the document. And that is where document management plays a role, where we have versioning and the ability to share the collaborative effort in creating a final document. When it gets to distribute it and it has been signed, at that point in time, it actually becomes a record. And when we have active storage where it's normally maintained, it can go through inactive storage and retention processes. At some point, there's a disposition process where we need to decide what, to, what needs to happen with this. And it may go onto a permanent archive or it may be destroyed completely. There are two main um, types of records. The, main, the first one is a temporary record. Uh, that means that the record is authorized for disposal after a specific retention period. We also have permanent records where disposal is not authorized. Those type of records need to be maintained forever. And anything that can represent a historical event or transaction all that may have evidentiary value must be classified as a record within an organization. Our typical record categories, these are the main type of categories that we quite often see within organizations. Basically everything in regards to your accounting practices will be regarded as records, contracts and agreements, correspondence, um, most electronic data, Employee records, very important. Um, within financial services organization, almost every piece of communication and um, uh, transactions will be regarded as records. In the insurance industry, there's also a host of records that are defined from investment organizations. Very interesting is that nuclear regulations is specifically highlighted. I think it's because of the importance of maintaining exactly what people have been doing with some with the nuclear material. Patents, pensions, property records, share registration records, statutory records, tax records, very important. We see time and again how uh, tax uh, authorities require certain types of records. And if you cannot produce those records, you may be at odds uh, with the tax authorities. The same with VAT documentation, um, the ability to prove your VAT claims at the end of the day is a very critical aspect and that, that is why those type of records need to be maintained. Now we find records to come in very shapes and sizes and formats. The first part is that we all know is physical records, physical documents. Uh, something that was signed, uh, your receipt, for example, when you purchase something. Um, all those type of components um, are actually physical records. 
uh, in my personal capacity, I actually make use of our own records management system to manage my own personal records. Um, and just this week, I was again going through a process of scanning all my receipts so that I can have them on file because they are very important. And uh, I need, if anyone at some point may require those receipts, then I know at least I also have them in electronic form. You all know that these tool slips tend to fade after a couple of months and you can't read anything of them. Obviously, the electronic documents eventually become a record, um, electronic transactions. An area that uh, is quite often neglected are audiovisual um, records, records of meetings. Even this webinar is a record of NetCB and it will be stored and maintained as such um, as we close this event, then the whole uh, recording gets downloaded and it gets filed away within our own systems. There's various microform that we still have. And there's a lot of organizations that still have microfish and microfilm within their organizations. And those are also records. Uh, we have various partnerships with um, hardware providers that provides us with the capability of digitizing these uh, microfilm and microfish um, uh, documents so that you can have the actual electronic version of it. A critical aspect is also email communications. And it's actually quite sad to still see today how many organizations are not focusing on storing their electronic email records. Um, it is a very important aspect of communications that email communications is archived and that users are not able to delete emails in the process. Even meetings and events are critical as records. Now with our, as I'm gonna to start to talk about our hybrid RMS platform, and you're still welcome to post any questions. I haven't seen anything popping up so far. Um, we started with the development of this system. It's now almost uh, 10 years ago. Uh, we used the platform um, from Microfocus called Microfocus Vibe. Uh, on, which is a software development platform, uh, which makes it very easy to customize and build custom applications on top of that platform. And we decided to make use of it. And over the years, it has evolved quite a bit. But first of all, our hybrid RMS is a system, is a management system for physical and digital records. It is web-based. And because of that, it is also accessible on mobile devices. It does include comprehensive document management capabilities. We also now provide for add-ons for e-signatures, as well as for PDF rendering and optical character recognition, OCR. As I mentioned before, it is baselined on ISO 16175. It is also an open source based content management uh, platform that we are using from Microfocus. That is the uh, CMS that we are using for the actual storage of the content. As I mentioned, it was developed as an extension for the Microfocus Vibe CMS platform. We had it audited in November 2016 and validated for compliance to the ISO 16715 standard. It is, however, with every implementation, it is different for every client because every client has got some unique requirements. Yes, certain organizations will have similar requirements within a municipal environment. It is very similar. Their file plans are also quite similar in nature. Um, national government, it is very similar in nature. Um, in the private sector, it is quite up to every organization to develop their own file plans in terms of this, because they are not required actually by National Archives to submit their file plans, but they are required to maintain their records in the private sector. 
One major advantage of this system is it is one platform for both document management and records management. We also make use of the same VI platform to build other custom requirements that clients quite often specify. And I will highlight some of these a bit later where certain ad hoc uh, workflow processes need to be implemented. There are various modules within the system. The, the, first of all, the HRMS, hybrid RMS module for records management. There is a component that we have at the moment, which is a, um, a rather manual uh, workflow process for um, submitting for electronic signatures. But I will also show you on the roadmap that there is a very tight integration for the submission for electronic signatures that you will be able to submit uh, your records for signing um, right directly from within the system. Within our municipal client environment, there is a very uh, uh, important capability requirement in terms of correspondence management, as well as report writing for meetings, uh, council meetings, etc. An aspect that is also very important for us is the ability to do OCR rendering and PDF rendering. Um, quite often, organizations need to purchase additional tools, etc. And what we are doing now. And uh, we also, within the next uh, six months, um, we will be releasing an automated OCR mechanism, as well as an automated PDF rendering capability within the system. This will allow you to not actually first download the Word document or from within Word generate the PDF and go through a lot of manual processes. The system will be able to cater for some of these processes automatically. In terms of the architecture, we decided uh, on the VI platform in the first place for on-premise based systems that is to provide an architecture that's highly scalable. We, we can start off with a small number of users uh, and some of our clients um, start off with 100 users or 200 users and it's a single server implementation. But some of our clients are going above 500 to 1,000 to even higher number of users. And in that case, we can scale the system quite easily in terms of the database support. It supports various database, five different database platforms. It also allows us to run it on both Linux and Windows platforms. In, in, in fact, some of the integration capabilities especially with um, the, the, the signature capabilities and OCR capabilities, we uh, require those modules to run on the Microsoft Windows servers, for example. For some of the clients that are using our solution already, um, the Colin Sabani local municipality, it's already been in place there for almost two years. Uh, in fact, we are busy going through another process at their environment at the moment. Um, the city of Umbrotuzi also have got an implementation of the system. In terms of the National Research Foundation, they also have an implementation of the system. The C uh, CSIR recently migrated uh, over 500,000 documents onto this platform. The SIU is a very special case environment is where we specifically look after case management for them within this platform, uh, uh, where all the whistleblower cases across the country can be registered and managed, and then all the related records are attached and managed via the system. Even ourselves within our own environment, we are making use of it extensively. Um, not only Vibe as a collaboration platform, but also with our records module included um, to manage various records within our own organization. In fact, we have a rule, if it doesn't exist on the system, the document doesn't legally exist in the organization. 
Now we start to look at the core functionality of the hybrid RMS components. First of all, I will deal with the basic functionality provided by the content management system is the document management part of it, where it does version control of your documents on the system and allow people to collaborate. And you can always tr keep track of what is happening um, with your documents in this space. It also allows us to build various business workflows. In fact, some processes of records management require certain workflow processes to um, fulfill certain tasks. Some organizations use it for project management. Even within the project management space, an entire project at the closure of a project will actually become a record. Even within um, NetCV's environment, uh, each and every bit and piece of document that is created on any of our projects are located within our own system. Another aspect that helps organizations to function far more effectively, especially during the collaboration process, is a desktop file sync that allows you to work offline with your documents. And then when you can become online or as you work offline on your local C drive, um, such documents will be synchronized automatically with the server itself. If someone else makes a change to such a document, the document on your local machine will up be updated to that change. Obviously, on your local drive, you will only see the latest version of the document. But um, in terms of the um, uh, system itself, it will maintain the versioning of those documents. One advantage of our solution is that it visualizes your file plan. I will jump into a demonstration in a bit where you can actually see um, the actual file plan. Uh, it ensures that every person in organization will be able to see the parts of the file plan, file, file plan where they are, have been authorized to have access to. That allows them to view records when it's required instead of um, uh, going to registry every time and asking them for certain records when they need those kind of records. An interesting fact, sometimes it may happen that someone may still require a physical record or the original records from your central registry. Um, we are actually bringing out a specific module shortly that will even manage the check-in and check-out capability of those physical records so that you can keep track of actually who has some of the record files at that point in time. Although the practice that we quite often recommend to our clients is that you only need to share a records file. This is, for example, where you can see the entire file plan main series for example, here, and then we have a file plan subseries, and then the actual records file over there. And instead of handing someone the actual records file, you only need to share a link to the records file to someone within the organization. But there are instances where the original documents may be required. There are certain documents where you need to maintain the original uh, originals forever. And uh, quite often lawyers will come and uh, say, we need to submit this as evidence in, in terms of the court, or we need to go and make certified copies of this, et cetera. Then they will need to check out the actual physical record file from the system. Once we get into an actual record file, you can see, for example, we always use, um, because sometimes we have confidential information, so we block it out. That is what I've done on this slide. But you may have a record, for example, here that says 
there was a delegation of authority and it will actually show you um, the record within the system, within that records file. When you open up the actual record itself, it will have all the classification detail of that specific record. And in this case, I can even see this record has been filed and it's been locked um, in this case. Another component that we've provided, and this is specifically where we get the um, hybrid part, is where you link the actual electronic system with your paper records. Um, I'm not sure if you can see me on the video, for example, this is a typical printout. You print it out on a a4 label like this, and you just stick it onto your records files, and you don't need to um, hand write or cut out little pieces of labels and suck them on different places onto those records files that I've seen is quite a practice in many organizations. So the process that we have in our system, when you open up a new records file, you don't start with the paper physical based system, you start with an electronic system. And that immediately creates the link to the paper-based system as well. One of the new features that we've introduced recently was the ability to administrate the, the custom metadata. Some organizations have got quite a significant list of custom data that needs to be maintained. In the past, uh, the process was always to lock a service request with us to update the metadata, but we have now changed this, that clients can maintain the metadata by themselves. In some, for example, the disposal authorities, and these things may change over time as different disposal authorities are being obtained. So at the end of the day, the solution in, ensures that we have barcoded cover sheets that can be generated for non-electronic records files. Um, you can even go and print out an index page for these paper-based record files to list all the records that are within the paper-based system. You can even insert um, profile pages into your paper-based system referring to electronic documents that only exist in electronic format for which there is no physical copy available. The, uh, a nice thing that the record administration, administrators like is the fact that they get notified when a new record has been submitted on the system so they can classify it and place it into the correct location within the file plan. One aspect of the system is that each and every activity of every user is always, but always um, audited. The workflow processes that we have within the system provides for the following um, benefits. It reduces your manual steps that you used to have uh, in terms of records management. Certain activities we can automate. We can customize the template notifications to various individuals within the organization. It even allows us to launch sub workflows within the system. Um, and it facilitate interactions. Instead of waiting for people to come to the system, we pull people into the system through these notifications they receive in their mailboxes. Uh, at some certain organizations, we even had to um, generate escalations where people fail to respond within a specific time period to perform certain acti activities. Um, one of the uh, components we did for the SIU, for example, was to even allow them to calculate performance metrics because they are compelled by law to perform certain activities within a certain time frame at every stage of the entire workflow process. Some of the standard workflows that's already included in the system is the whole record submission process, the filing process, and then also the disposal process. In terms of the records filing process, 
there are many mechanisms that we have for people to actually submit records into the system. You can either submit via email, you can submit via a manual upload, can even be done via your intranet if you create a form or a link on your intranet. Uh, some organizations, as they scan, they can scan directly from um, scanning equipment and devices. Just while on the scanning topic, um, it's always important to note here that when you look at the digitization of your, your physical records, it is really important that you invest in scanning equipment that can scan documents at a high resolution but produce very sm small file, uh, digital files. We have found that many of these multifunction um, scanning printer copier devices are actually not always suitable. They do scan, they can submit their documents, but they tend to have a much larger image footprint than scanning equipment that has specifically been, been designed for the digitization process. This also includes the historical submission of documents, especially where organizations want to start with a back scanning process. Then you need quite high speed scanners and sometimes a range of scanning equipment to uh, scan sometimes very fragile documents. Um, we know of some organizations that have documents that are almost a hundred years old, old maps that are so fragile that you can't just put them through a scanner. In fact, the scanner will become the best shredder that you can ever think of if you put those maps through, through the system. Uh, so you have these huge flatbed scanners that are capable of digitizing old maps and documents that may be very fragile. Even book scanners, you even have book scanners that can allow for that kind of functionality. Well, the standard filing process, um, I don't think I need to go into much more detail. A client can just email it from your mail email client if you didn't use the document management system. The records administrator get notified and they can move it directly to the file plan. Uh, then the upload um, folders that we sometimes provide is designated a submission folders on the system with for maybe per department or per team or maybe even per project where they can submit records once a document has been completed it's been signed off it now becomes a record it can be submitted we always in our processes have that review process by a records administrator it's very important that we maintain existing processes especially within government that are already in place. And we mimicked many of these processes inside a system so that for the staff that are previously used to only be used to the manual processes can understand the process, electronic process far easier and quicker because we use the same terminology. We make sure that the types of steps they used to take in a manual process is still the same within the electronic process. The same with your scanning of documents. You scan, it's either scanned by email or uh, some scanners can interface directly. Um, one of the organizations that um, is basically leading in um, South Africa in terms of the importing of many of the scanning equipment, they have their own interfaces um, that we use to interface with that allow us directly from the scanner, the quality control, and then it goes through the OCR process and then the review of the records administrator before it is actually moved into the fall plan. The same happens with the digitization and historical requests. One of the processes that we recommend to clients that they use within our environment, our system, instead of handing someone the actual physical file, um, even if the file has never been scanned or digitized, 
at that point in time, you actually go and digitize that file for that single request you've received. You never need to let the records file out of the registry's custody. And you only need to share the link to the actual record records file to the person that requested it within the organization. Now, in terms of hybrid RMS for government, there are additional components that we can cater for. Is the ability to uh, handle clearance certificate requests, payment requests, incoming mail. Now, this is not incoming email. This is your post. We're talking about the daily post file that can be managed through the system. Um, that becomes part of the correspondence management processes. And then obviously, those of you that are coming from a municipal environment knows that there are a lot of council meetings and there's a lot of report writing that needs to take place. And we can even cater for that, those processes within this environment. This is just an example of one implementation. As you can see, there are e-sign requests, incoming mail, incoming facsimiles, incoming post, etc., that can be hand and dealt with. The current implementation of OCR that you see here is a very manual process where it is something that just monitors a folder, but um, on the long run, um, that will fall away and it will become a back-end process that will be basically invisible to the users. They will just know that the document has been OCR. Um, part of our submissions process will always validate whether a document, if, if it's a scan document in PDF format, whether it has been OCR or not. And um, the end users will not need to perform any further activities around that. I mentioned um, additional functions, um, which is the ability to launch sub uh, workflow processes, the ability to manage case files within the system. Um, on a municipal level, we regard case files, for example, as each property has got a case file. Um, one of our clients um, also manages case files in terms of um, grants that's been offered. Um, those are all records at the end of the day. Obviously, EXCO meetings and other types of meetings are all important in terms of the records management process. Now, if we start to look at our current version, which is 4.5, which is currently out, released in April 2021, it now provides for the simplified administration, is the modules that we've added. It's also the ability to um, moving our file plan metadata uh, to a dedicated HRMS database. And you'll see what our reasoning was behind this. In the past, we were reliant on the CMA system for that. We are no longer reliant on that. And the file plan field validation can also take place um, within the CMS as you add your records. What we will be releasing very soon um, is a specific integration into Signy Flow. We first decided to select Signy Flow because they're also a South African-based company for the e-signature integration. Currently, our workflow processes can handle uh, the submissions process for submitting a document for e-signing. What we are going to do is to integrate it into in such a way that the whole preparation of a document for e-signing will be taking place within our own interfaces um, because of the vast amount of APIs the Signy Flow solution offer us. Signy Flow is also adherent to all the requirements in terms of the ECT and other le legislation in South Africa. And hence we've decided to rather partner with them than to partner with uh, um, international organizations that do not always follow our exact um, legal processes. As I mentioned before, it's the automated OCR of submitted scanned PDF documents. 
um, analyzing of existing scanned PDF documents. So if you already have PDF documents that's been scanned in the system, we will go and check up on them to see if they actually have been OCR and then we'll update them with an, a, a, a searchable version of that document. Also, there's the automated location of updated records with metadata to the fall plan. That means that if a document metadata has been updated and the location in the fall plan is supposed to change based on that, that process can be automated. Another process, and that this will also reduce the time of implementation. Quite often, the, the, the implementation of a records management system can take many, many weeks. And a part of that is because of the uh, development of the file plan inside the system. We are in the process of being able to import a file plan. And then if you give us an Excel spreadsheet that indicates the file plan, it's a mere process of importing that spreadsheet into the system and the entire file plan is created on the system. Quite often, organizations need to keep on updating provincial archives or national archives in terms of what the current file plan is like. What the current file plan is like. And you, you, you need to submit those documents for um, verification to authorize the current version of your file plan. That process at the moment was quite a manual process for organizations by maintaining um, a Word document or something like this. But we also now making it uh, possible for you to just merely export the current edition of your file plan and submitting it to someone. We also simplifying the records file opening procedure. That will also allow you to, um, there's a couple of manual processes that you need to follow at the moment to open up a new records file. That process has been simplified as well. The same with the uh, simplified record submission procedure as well. We will also be introducing new enhanced and user-friendly reporting interfaces. There is an existing reporting mechanism inside the system, but we feel it's quite complex with certain users. And uh, we are working on a very new enhanced and user-friendly reporting interface. There's also gonna be a very new enhanced disposition management component. That is in terms of automating notifications with reports of which records are eligible at a disposition date. And then the, you still need to make that final decision whether it should be extended. There may be legal holds that need to be applied or whether the documents need to be shipped to uh, national archives um, or whether it should be destroyed completely. We're also working on simplified installation scripts. So that's more for the technical guys in terms of this. What we're also working on is CMS independence. It's now I understand why we started to separate the hybrid RMS system with all the metadata and the information about your records out of the CMS system. This allow us to start to work with other content management systems. Let's say you're currently using MicroFocus Vibe as your platform, but in the future, you may want to use Microsoft SharePoint as your CMS. And that is the reason why we do that. So you don't need to change your records management system um, if you need to change your content management and document management platform. It will allow you then to very simple, do a simple migration between the different systems. We're also working in visits. We, we're still working and thinking and talking about this. 
And that's the ability to support multiple CMS systems, content management systems. So that at the end of the day, you will have a single records management view of all the locations where you may have records located, whether it is stored on SharePoint, next cloud, in the cloud itself, we don't really care. So in summary, we have a highly customizable platform that we are using for our records management system. Um, it has been validated for ISO 16175. It is designed for both public and private sector organizations. Um, we can provide you with migration tools that can be customized for your specific environment. And we do cater for both electronic and non-electronic records. I see there's been some comments in the chat. Are there any questions so far? Uh, sorry, Kubis, there was one question that um, I wasn't able to fully answer, um, but it was in regards to integration with um, SAP DMS. If we're able to, uh, or if we have ever integrated with SAP, so SAP DMS. Well, if we get a request specifically for SAP DMS, it's the first time that someone has requested it for SAP DMS, we can definitely look at that. Um, and uh, provide uh, an integration module for that as well. That definitely will be a possibility because I know that SAP uh, has got a massive API for integration um, capabilities. So that is definitely something that we can do um, and uh, investigate and then decide um, how quickly and how soon it should be implemented. And uh, then there was a, there's another question that was just raised by um, Mr. Koza, Skubuza Koza. He's saying that the organization is not fully implemented, was not implemented records management. They only have a draft file plan. And will hybrid RMS be able to assist them in setting up a fully functional records management system? So the short answer to that is yes. I'll let Kirbis elaborate. And what our system provides is a visual representation of the file plan that you've developed and that's, um, and that's been approved. But Kubis, if you can elaborate on that, yeah. please. Yeah, look, we, we can even start off with a, a draft file plan. And you always still need to submit your file plan to um, your provincial um, uh, registry uh, um, uh, archives or to your national archives, depending um, who is in whose domain you fall. But it, uh, uh, once you get your um, uh, um, approved file plan back from them, any modifications that they um, suggest that, that should be made to this to the file plan, it's very easy to implement them. Um, it's very easy to, to, to um, adjust your file plan um, over time. It doesn't mean that once you've decided on a file plan that it is um, cast in stone. But remember, once you have classified records according to a certain classification scheme, that should already be done according to the, the approved file plan. Um, so the, the, it is possible to start off with a draft file plan and then evolve it into the actual approved file plan at the end of the day. Any further questions on this? I see we're almost running out of time. I can just quickly jump in here. I just quickly want to go to um, show you some stuff here. If I quickly go to an actual example, I'm actually within, running within our development environment. Um, if I quickly go here uh, on, this, on the, my navigation panel here, you can see the actual um, different components. If I quickly want to go here to uh, one of the record files, um, you can see here that it has got a unique reference. This one hasn't got any specific department that's been classified according to it. Um, there you, I can quickly click on if I want to um, create my... Um, file cover for printing purposes, et cetera. And in this case, I think my printer is located as a Microsoft PDF, um, a PDF version, but I can send it to any printer. Um, I, you do get these kind of um, A4 labels, and that is what we are using. It's A4 labels that you can print these um, um, components on. 
Um, if I quickly jump to one of them, you see, I'm not sure if there's an actual record. This is our development environment, so it's quite empty. Um, if I quickly go to our HRMS administration components, just to show you quickly here what we're doing from this side. First of all, um, most of you will all have record types. So in the past, we always had to intervene to update the record types. It's no longer necessary. If you need to add a new record type, you can do it yourself. Um, obviously, all the records are not always located in the same location, and it's possible to maintain various locations where you are actually keeping records. Um, there's also a, a, a new option that's been um, added, uh, which, which wasn't asked in the past by our clients, but we've decided to add it because it actually is supposed to be there. In terms of South Africa requirements, in terms of records uh, classification, is the security classification around documents and records. Um, also, the ability to build up your um, file plan series from this side, the ability to build up your disposal authorities. Um, now, uh, some organizations have got additional metadata that needs to be stored with the records. And uh, we've also made provision for that, where you can specify um, different um, custom attributes. And it's, there's, there's no limit to the number of attributes you can add. And obviously you can then add the metadata that satisfy those specific attributes within that specific environment. So this is in a nutshell. I see we are three minutes left and then we are on our time limit. Any further questions by anyone? No, so far, I think we've answered all the questions that have came through. Um, Justin has definitely also answered those ones that were in the chat field. So thank you for that, Justin. So if anyone else might have any additional questions that are not popping up to mind right now, you can definitely reach out to us. Um, you can go to a website, also you can review this in, 20, in the next 24 hours, this presentation and this whole video conferencing will be up online. So you can go there on our website. As I said before, you can also go and register for our future webinars. We have these on a weekly basis every Thursday. So definitely, definitely do check us out there. Also, please feel free to follow us on our social media pages, as well as on our LinkedIn. Um, additional information can also be found in our YouTube channel. So that's also something nice for you. All right. So thank you so much, everyone. Oh, Justin there. Oh, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. All right. All right. So if anyone else has any further questions, like I said, reach out to us. And thank you so much for everything that you guys have asked. We definitely will get back to all of you individually if this is something that need be. All right. So Cheers. Have a good one. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.